My guest today is Casey Gillette, Senior Director of Digital Marketing at Co-Marketing. Casey has been a sought after speaker, writer, and contributor in SEO for many years. She's presented at the top conferences in the industry, including MozCon, PubCon, SMX, and Search Love London. I really love her writing. She is a VIP contributor at Search Engine Journal and regularly writes for Co-Marketing's company blog. One of my favorite things Casey talks about is a challenge, asking digital marketers to grow up a little bit. As Google has gotten more sophisticated, the tactics that used to work when Casey and I started in SEO aren't as effective any longer. We start our conversation talking about some of the most cringeworthy epic fails she has seen. We also talk about some brands that are doing things right. Make sure to listen to how Wegmans, a supermarket chain in New York, earns customer loyalty and lines around the block by making memorable content. Casey is also a really enjoyable person to have a beer with. She was kind enough to let us interrupt her move to drink German beers and talk about what the top content marketers in the world are doing differently, the ways Google rewards great customer experience, and why you absolutely have to take a duck boat tour the next time you're in Boston. Casey Gillette, welcome to Southern Search. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for doing this. You're right in the middle of a move, I understand, so I appreciate I, um... you. Yeah, so all my blank walls, uh, <laughs> nothing, and you can't see the boxes. That's the key. Yeah, I'm. I'm also in the process of moving, so I've been kicked out of my house, and I'm on Long Island. So it looks like you got is, you got some wine behind you, though. So that's okay. yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It doesn't belong to me, but I uh, <laughs> I, I plan to, to take advantage of this as much as I can. Yeah. Um, well, I think we got you some some beers. Is that true? You did. Um, you got me a significant number of beers. Apparently, you've heard some things about me. <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much. Yes, you got, I have a few Hefeweizens. Um, you got me Wine Stefaner, which is actually one of my favorite beers. Um, and all awesome. German, too. So these are like high quality Hefeweizens. I really we did well. We did okay we did on this. Well. Yes. Right. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Let's do a virtual cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I appreciate you coming out. I'm having a Blue Point tasted toasted lager. This is Ooh. a Long Island special, so Sounds it's good. very good. Yeah. yeah, it's very nice. I mean, so, any day, anytime I can drink a beer at two thirty on a Thursday, like I'm good. <laughs> Casey, this is this is hard work. You know, I just <laughs> we really we really want to strain ourselves a lot. So um, there's there's something I wanted to talk to you about right off the bat, which is. You, if it was normal times, we'd be getting ready for MozCon. Yeah. I started to look back at some stuff that you've done over the years at MozCon. Yeah. You like to do this sort of like challenge content marketers to grow up, to do better, do. to get more. <laughs> I'm wondering if you could tell us what are the cringeworthy things that that were bothering you? Like, why did you, why did oh, you boy. feel like you needed to challenge them? I'm How much time do you have? <laughs> <stuff>. <laughs> How much time do you have? You know, I mean, I think the thing is like we have been in search for so long and you know really my background started in seo um, i did link building for a while i was really into like brands and pr and things like that um and all that sort of fell into content like i've always loved writing and, but i mean really we started doing content as search marketers because that's what we needed right Correct, but right. also as search marketers we tried doing the bare minimum to drive results <laughs> and it worked, right? It yes, worked for a yes. while. And so you still have people though, who are doing, you know, those, you know, who are still spinning articles and still trying yes. to pump out as much content. And, you know, it's not always fair to people because, you know, there's a lot of people who don't know as much as we do about search. They're not in it every day. So there's still so much misinformation out there about how much content you have to post, the type of content you have to post. Um, and so my whole thing is like, just stop, stop listening to all this garbage, like do what's right for you. You know, I mean, the other piece too is when we think about content, you know, I think people just think about blogging or writing, but there's so That's many cool point. things now, like we're on video right now and it's not that complicated, you know, like no. I'm on my, I'm on my laptop. I have headphones in and you know, I don't, you don't have to have all this equipment. Um, you know, Barry Schwartz, he goes to conferences now and he's doing these like vlogs where he just has this really cool little handheld thing with all this equipment and it comes out fantastic. And so my thing last year was like, let's encourage people to create like interesting content and better content um, that can be video or podcast or whatever it is. Like we have the technology now to go above and beyond. Yeah. And anyway, you I can go on forever. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And you, you might, so like if, if, we, if we can kind of know like spun content is the, is, is an example of what not to do an epic fail. Um, 
you mentioned you mentioned making memorable content. That is really the idea. That's the object. That should be your objective. Yeah. Whether it's blogging, video, anything else. Who's doing this really well? Who's who, what is Oh my gosh. So I have a few examples that I always use, um, but they, they stand out to me, you know? And I mean, I think if we just stay in the industry, um, a lot of times I'll use the example from Seer Interactive. They have this screaming frog guide that they have had for years, right? But they keep it updated and it is fantastic because I know that if I'm not sure how to do something in Screaming Frog, I can go to see her and that will be updated. Um, right. Buffer is the same way with their like social media images. They keep it updated on what your dimensions have to be, the types of images you should use. Um, but the brand that I love to talk about, uh, I'm just kind of obsessed with them and they might actually be in Long Island. I'm not sure. Have you ever heard of Wegmans? I have. Okay. Yeah. So you know why I heard of it? Because there are these, like right before I interview people, Greg, Gifford, who our mutual yeah. friend, like tell me all these things I need to ask. And he gives me no other context. <laughs> he just says, you know, like, and so one of the ones was ask her about Wegmans. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you, you beat me to it. <laughs> yes. So Wegmans is a grocery store. Um, I grew up in uh, Rochester, New York. Outside oh, of Rochester. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a nice place. Um, but that's where Wegmans was started. And okay. it's, it's a grocery store. But if you meet, and again, this is why Greg knows I love it so much because I always get so excited about it. If you meet anyone who like grew up with a Wegmans or is familiar with Wegmans, people are obsessed with them. Um, and they've just built this real culture of, of people who love their, their grocery stores. But the reason I use them and I talk about them in content is they've figured out how to create engaging content. And I think that's really cool for a grocery store to do. So if you go to their Instagram, they have like little gifts that they create or they just have recipes. Um, they have a print magazine that they send out. But uh, what's cool about it is it's not your normal circular. It talks about the farmers that they source from. It talks about recipes that you can use with, their, uh, with the things from these farmers. So I just think they've done such a fantastic job of going beyond just, hey, we're a grocery store. Um, you know, they do these things that, that people love. And when I say people love them, people wait in line when a new Wegmans opens. So there was one that opened in Carolina, I think last year. Yeah, in Raleigh, maybe it was this year. Time, time just means nothing anymore at this point, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so, but yeah. there was like a line of like a thousand people waiting outside to get in. So oh, I love it, yeah. yeah but their content is excellent. Um, you know, another brand that I think that, you know, I like to use an example of, um, there's a bathing suit company called Somersault. Okay. And what's, what they've created, and I've seen other companies doing this more and more, but um, they created this fit finder. And so you can go online and go through this process to help you find the right fit for a swimsuit, cool. which yeah. is just like really, really intuitive. And I like to think about that, like how software companies can apply that, right? Like it's easy yeah. to be an e-commerce retailer and come up with cool things. But, you know, if you're a software company, you know, what about things like, you know, if you are like a deep crawler, screaming frog or whatever it is, you need a certain number of licenses or seats, right? Yes. So can you do something like that for your customers where you're asking them these questions of, you know, how many seats do you need? How many links or URLs are you trying to crawl? And then it builds and tells them which plan they need. Like, that's what I think would be really cool. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, I, I, I love this idea though of the challenge. So like you're, you've got the, the content marketers, you want them to to really up their game, what what could people be doing more? Do you think what what are the things that they're just they're, they're kind of leaving some meat on the bone? Well, I mean, I think people write for the sake of writing, right? They write I because they think yeah. that they need to. And so, you know, yeah. we work with a lot of clients who they have their editorial calendars, and they're just publishing content because they think they need to publish it. What they're not doing is looking to see what are our customers asking about, right? What are the things our customers are asking about? What are the things they're right. interested in? Um, you know, one of the things I'll talk a lot about is people talking to their sales or support team. Um, you know, what are the things that your customers don't know? What are the things they can't find on your website? And so like, it's so simple to me, but like, right. to me, that's what I think is a small thing that marketers need to be doing. Yeah, and think go. about it. You know, think about it right now. How many new questions you need to have up on your right. site answered? Because, you know, it's 
what are you open? Are you right. uh, are you allowed to, you know, have <laughs> what are the protocols? Yeah, what right? are the protocols? Like, what are you yeah. doing to show me that you're safe? Um, yeah, and you know, I have. I definitely have had some pushback, you know, we've had, we've gotten a lot of pushback, you know, we're put, we're trying to push our clients to take a different route to content. Um, and sometimes there's pushback, you know, I have a client right now who they don't want to answer these types of questions because they don't feel it's their place in the market, but they're the only ones who can answer the question about your own process. You know? Know. So, um, you know, it's things like that where sometimes people just aren't thinking like, about their customers. And that to me is the whole point, right for what your customers actually want. There's so much garbage out there. Yeah, and I think there, to your point, it's probably easier to find these kinds of questions than yes. a decision maker might think. I mean, even, yes. I, could think of, I could think of a few ways. You could look at all like the, the ways people are searching on your website and you could look at, I don't know, you got a, a Reddit page or uh, yeah. uh, your reviews for local businesses like yeah. we work with. Um, yeah. What are some other ways that you can find these questions? Yeah, I mean, answer them? you know, I talked about like talking to your sales or support team, but like yeah. if you have like a Zendesk or you have a community site already set up where your customers are already putting in questions and asking, go look and see what those are. Um, yeah. I had a client who they had a whole support site and what we would do is some of those URLs actually ranked because they were things that people needed to know. We took those top questions, expanded them out, put them onto the main site so that they were accessible to people, right? Um, if you have live chat, live chat functions are a great way to figure out great what point. your site doesn't have great and they log yeah. the conversations. So yes. <laughs> take yes. a look through. Um, the one thing I always say is if you don't have your site search enabled in analytics, go enable it, go turn it on. Right, you can it's such see, a gold mine, right? Right, it's yeah. a gold mine, and people just forget you forget about it. Um, go look at that, yeah. And then you have you know your Quora's and your Reddit, and sure. um, you know, for we work with a lot of software clients, so you okay. know, there's the Capteras and G2 That's crowds. Cool. Like, go see what people are saying. Like, there's social too. Um, I think social can be a little bit harder to mine, but you know, from a time perspective, but there's so many places. I mean, here's the other thing ask your customers. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know that I know that's crazy but, and you know to your point like the reviews go look and if you have reviews go look and see what are people saying about you right, right. what are they saying about your products or your or your location whatever it is your service um, go see what they're saying and like what are some of the problems they might be having that you can then go solve by writing yeah. to it or creating something around it um, you know, just thinking about the COVID stuff, right? If you're a local retailer or a restaurant, wouldn't it be great if you just made a video that talked about all the safety precautions you've taken and you can show people, here are all the things that we've done. We want you to feel safe. You throw that up on your Facebook page, your website, and now people can see exactly the precautions you've taken to yes. make them safe. And it's in a it's in a cool format, so I don't have to right. read seventeen bullet exactly. points. You know, it's like right. our well, staff washes their hands. You know, it's like it's right. more it's more fun to watch a video. <laughs> well, and yeah. that's the whole thing. Like, if there's like a stat, like eighty percent of people remember what they see versus twenty percent what they read, something yeah. like that, right? So, like, yeah. we're very visual. We're visual as humans. Um, give me something that I can see and digest without, to your point, without having to read. I don't need twenty bullets about your yeah. safety precautions. Just show yeah. me. Yeah, I love it. I think a lot of this is just about the, the search engines are getting smarter. And um, I don't know when you started to work in, in SEO, but I was like, uh, early on, it was all about trying to manipulate Google. Yeah. <laughs> and now I think you know, people, like, people like you and people who are really focused on content are about having a great customer experience and then being rewarded for that by Google because Google's search engine is so much smarter. Yes. Yeah, with I all mean, of these other things. That's exactly it. So I started in 2005 and that was the game. Just throw some keywords in there, throw some, you know, keyword stuff, content on the page and you were golden and that worked. Um, and even, you know, I've gone through it all, like the article spinning, like the link buy, yeah, like the, done the, it all. The, the, the one article that's car accident <laughs> yeah. lawyer and the next one's car accident attorney. That's and yeah, right. I, I get it. Yeah. That's exactly right. But yeah. you know, I think about now, um, part of the reason I'm so focused on customer is to exactly your point, Mark, which is Google has gotten smarter. And my whole thing is Google wants to give people the best experience. 
and your site has to be the one to do that, right? right. And, and on the way that Google finds that information is by what content is on your page, right? What content yes. is on your site? So we have to figure out what, what are your customers looking for? What's the intent of their searches? Um, I'd say that's really what's driven my passion towards the customer side. Like, yes, I care about customers, but also like, I care about being number one in Google. I care about, <laughs> I care winning, about right? my clients, yeah. 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 I get it. No, totally. And I, mean, I think there's, we used to bracket these things into different, so you have your content and you have your link building and you have your on-site and all that. It's really, if you, if you just focus on the customer experience, um, that, I guess I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with how that would help link building, but that involves good on-site and, and, yep. and technical SEO. It involves great content that is interesting and engaging and not spun and not you know, over-optimized or anything like that. Maybe well, you mean, could help me out with, with link building though. How does, how does this, this yeah. mindset? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's huge. I think it's a huge tie to link building. In fact, we don't really even do much link building anymore. I'd say what we do now is primarily bylines for clients. The um, digital PR, yeah. Yeah, right. it's exactly, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. we're not out there trying to like build, build links in the traditional sense. Um, I mean, cause you think about it, I'm talking to you and I say, oh, hey, like I just had this really great experience with so-and-so, right? Well, now the next time you're going to look for that, you might look for the same thing or you go to write about it and you remember, oh, hey, I remember Casey told me about this. Now I'm linking to them. Um, or even just think about, I like to use the example of like hotels, um, hotels or even restaurants really. What people say about you, um, matters more than ever because think about the search results if you go to yes. search for like a hotel you're not finding that hotel you're finding <laughs> TripAdvisor and google hotels and um you know every other review site on the internet you know before you actually get to your hotel um you're finding blogs right so you know someone has a great experience at your hotel now they're writing about you on their travel blog and they're linking to you um right. you know I, a few years ago um, I had stayed at a W down in um, Fort Lauderdale for PubCon okay. and I had just tweeted a picture out and they sent me a personalized robe, a W robe. <laughs> they had customized it with my name on it. And like, I wrote a blog post about it. I wrote, I posted it on Instagram. I posted on, I posted it on everything. Yeah. Right. And now here's all this word of mouth plus a link just for them taking this one simple thing. Yeah. Plus you're going to be a, a customer of theirs every time you, you right. go to South Florida. Right. So that's awesome. Yeah. Right. Well, that, that's, I think it's such a great mindset to have. And I think it's really important. The, um, I, I mentioned that Greg gives me these, these questions and I don't want to get, I don't want to get too far down on my beer before I ask them. Uh, again, I have no context more than he just sends out like little blurbs on our Slack. I can't so wait. <laughs> I've known Greg one, for a long time. So Lord knows what this going is going to say. I'm going to ask you about Boston duck boats. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, duck boat, duck boat tours. Are you familiar with those at all? Not really. I don't really? think so. <laughs> yes. Greg wasn't either. Um, so they're, they're in Boston. They have them in Maryland, Seattle, a bunch of places. So they took these old W world war two crafts, I think, and they're amphibious vehicles so they can go in the water or they can drive on land and they're oh, called duck boats. And they do tours here in Boston. And it is my absolute favorite thing. So it sounds like a blast. It is. And the people are really funny. So one of the reasons I love Boston so much is it's very historical. Um, mm -hmm. And so you get a lot of that history, but in a funny manner. And so, yeah, Greg was here for search love. You know, I'm always like, did you go on a duck boat? Um, but so most yeah. people have taken like one of them. I've gone on nine. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're pretty right. fantastic. So you'll have to look it up. So um, I can't speak to it in any other city, but I can tell you if you come to Boston, they're pretty fantastic. See, this is more of what you're talking about. <laughs> Word of mouth for duck, mm -hmm. Boston duck boats. Okay, perfect. Um, and then the next thing, uh, we already talked about Wegmans, but yeah. the, the shuffleboard at MozCon, Ooh, yeah. again, no more context yeah. than that. <laughs> so... Um, you know, sadly, there's no in person this year, but um, for the past couple of years, Greg, myself, um, Jason Dodge and Greg's wife played with us last year. Um, Greg and I are the reigning table shuffleboard champions for the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, I, so 
I don't love admitting this, but like I'm a pretty competitive person, <laughs> especially yeah, like it, when it comes to yard games. A lot of SEOs games. are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, and <laughs> I don't know appeals. like if you love like, like uh, cornhole or any game like that, like. Yeah, I'm really good. Like, yeah. oh, see, I'm, <laughs> I'm really not, good. but I get like really into it and I want to win. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, a couple of years ago we were playing and I was just like, stay cool, Casey. Like, don't, don't be a jerk. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're ever in Chicago, we can play cornhole on Search Lab cornhole what? boards. We got oh, it. that's yeah. awesome. It was like a, a, a holiday party gift to my team uh, two years ago. Oh, that's and, really uh, fun. They get they they got used all the time, and now our now we can't we don't have like the space we have to actually have people in our office, so we can't really. <laughs> that feels like a play. good problem to have. Yeah, it's um, a good problem, but it really is dampened the fun. <laughs> <laughs> we have um we do a field day once a year, um so like just like when you're a kid, and so we do like yard games as our team event, and so one of the games is is cornhole, but. You know, our office is, it's not huge. So you can't just be storing like giant cornhole boards. So I got the collapsible ones. They're garbage. Do not yeah. get the collapsible ones. No, these are, <laughs> They're not good. Yeah, these are, these are pretty good. So yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to do some, some shuffleboard or. Yeah. Someday when, you know, when we can go places again. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> well, Casey, how do people get in touch with you? And is there anything that we can help you promote at this time? You know, I'm actually taking it easy this year. Um, you know, I, my plan was to, to not do a ton of shows. Um, you know, you know, like Greg, like, you know, I spend a lot of time on the speaking circuit and it just, you know, and you're on it too, you know, it like takes a lot of time. Um, and I just decided this year that I wasn't going to do a lot of that. And then the world made that very easy. <laughs> so Good choice. Did I, you, uh, well, go ahead. Yeah, go did ahead. you jinx all conferences with this decision of yours? Like the, the universe... Um, agreed with oh. your decision I don't know so I at the end of last year I said I wanted to travel less and save money and then yeah I, I am blaming myself on this one sorry world well, I think <laughs> like, you, you um, called that one yeah I know, good, good, I know. Yeah. Um, but yeah so you know I'm at co-marketing um, you know you can check out the site I'm on Twitter I always say like connect with me on LinkedIn don't like just don't. Yeah. <laughs> do you use LinkedIn a lot I, I like post these videos on there and then I get spammed with people. I have no idea who they are. Yeah. And uh, yeah. no, I think, I think there's maybe 10% of it is great. And then yeah. Yeah. That's 90% of it so is, is I'm nice. always like, Oh, connect to me on LinkedIn. And then I just don't. So don't, yeah. but yeah, Twitter, I'm definitely on Twitter. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's really kind of it. All right. Well, awesome. Well, this is really fun. I, uh, I encourage everybody to check out co-marketing and your your blogging there and uh hopefully we'll we'll meet each other in person one of these I days i hope so and thanks again for the beer it's very delicious i'm glad you like it i will uh i will sign off with a, a cheers here cheers thanks again for coming on and we'll see you guys next time on southern search